Fantastic. 41 days at sea. Tell 40. us. 40 days. 40 days. <laughs> yeah, yes. it was wrong in the press release, uh, so yeah, that's why. <laughs> tell us how grueling that was on your body. Uh, yeah, it was very hard. It was more grueling from the fatigue than like the physical. The physical work is hard, but I trained a lot for this. Whereas dealing with the tiredness and the fatigue was so hard. And trying to keep your emotions regulated when you're so tired, that was the hardest bit, I'd say. How do you mentally prepare for a task like this? I worked with a coach who's based in Chamonix in France. She's called Chloe Lamphia. And we did a lot of mental prep around how you process your thoughts as they come and recognize that you might think it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's reality and, and using all of these tools so that when it happens on the water, you're able to separate out, you know, f bad thoughts from what's actually happening. And But it's hard and you rely a lot on your friends and your family to send messages of support and, you know, it's tough, but I found it okay being on my own. I never felt lonely, but yeah, I definitely needed the, the support of the people at the end of the phone to help on the days where it was extra tough. How do you prepare for the elements and the weather? The weather was the biggest challenge. I got huge weather, like the most wind you'll get on the Atlantic pretty much top end. And it made for a very intense, fast crossing. And I think everyone wishes for big weather so that it's quick and they don't think about the reality of what life on board a six metre long boat is like in 30 knots of wind. So I prepared, I trained a lot on the boat. I trained in Portugal for two months as well to row in the Atlantic. But even I was surprised at just how hectic the conditions were. So yeah, it was a test, a huge test. But I guess you just have to put the work in beforehand so you have the experience to be able to cope. I know only one person who ever went 40 days without eating. Uh, I know you had to eat in those 40 days. What did you eat? How did you prepare for food? Uh, I had freeze-dried food in packets, kind of like what they take to space. And you just hydrate those with water that I made through a desalination unit on the boat. So you take seawater and take the salt out and use this to drink. So I'd make five liters of water a day. And then I had a small jet boil cooker. So I was able to heat water to cook the food. And then I had uh, pa like daily packs of snacks and smaller bites to eat to, for sustenance. Any difficulties experienced on the water with um, sea creatures, anything like that? Other vessels? Uh, yeah, so a lot of tanker ships, which when you're in such a small boat, it seems so gigantic, but you radio through to them and say, can you see me on your AIS, which is how you see where everyone is on the water, to check they know that you're there. Um, and I saw all sorts of wildlife. I, was, I had a shark that came up just behind the boat and was like staring at the boat. And I sort of sat still and I was like, I'm on the boat, he can't get me. And <laughs> took a video of him like following the boat through the water. And, yeah, whales, turtles, you see all the, you know, it's such a privilege to be somewhere so remote and see all of these things on a tiny boat when it's totally quiet and, you know, they come really close. And I had a, a super pod of dolphins that visited the boat on my birthday. So I think they heard there was a party. There was like a hundred of them, you know, everywhere. Um, there was another question in your question, sorry. Wildlife, you'd yeah, ask Yeah, other vessels. Other vessels, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, any big cruise liners pass you? On I didn't see any cruise liners, no, just shipping tankers. Yeah. Okay, well, we celebrated your birthday while you were on the water. <laughs> yeah. We also celebrated International Women's Day. Indeed. How important is it for, for women to see you accomplishing a feat like this? Yeah, that was the main purpose of the whole challenge, was to do something that's so difficult and so big to prove that women are capable of anything. And I think we're seeing sport develop, but it's still very much developing in a way that isn't equal. And you have, you know, Tour de France introducing a route that's shorter for women or we still play three sets of tennis or and I think there's still this cultural perception of women as weaker and actually I can't think of many challenges harder than what I've just completed and to do that alone and as a woman I really hope that any woman or girl that sees that realizes that just anything is possible for them and there's those opportunities are there if you're willing to put in the hard work. Lastly what's next for you? I don't know that's the question everyone wants to know isn't it not an ocean row. <laughs> <laughs> we've done that um i'm not sure i don't have any like big challenges planned but i definitely still want to keep doing the work i've been doing work around trying to change policies in sport to make it more equal and i had a 
confirmation whilst I was on the boat, actually on my birthday, that Ironman, the triathlon company, have introduced a global pregnancy deferral policy because I asked them to bring one in. And like things like this are what really leave the doors open for everyone that comes after. So that will be the main focus, I think, going forward for now, looking at how you can use the platform I've created through the challenge to to capitalise on that and to try and drive change, you know, structural change within sport for women. So that's the immediate next. Mm -hmm. Pleasure talking to you. Victoria. Thank you so All much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.